ask any student who has taken an introductory course in physiology how information is transmitted from one nerve cell to another, and they will immediately blurt out neurotransmitters. Indeed, the message is via a signaling molecule that in response to an electrical stimulation that travels down a nerve is released into the synapse, the tiny gap that separates nerve cells. This then fits into a receptor on an adjacent cell, much like a key fits into a lock. When the fit is just right, it triggers an electrical response that travels down the nerve cell, causes release of signaling molecules at the other end. These then migrate towards a receptor in another nerve cell or a muscle cell, and the message gets transmitted along. Such signaling molecules are known as neurotransmitters, and dozens are known to function in the human body. Credit for the discovery of the first neurotransmitter goes to German-born physician Otto Lowy, who in 1921 removed the beating hearts from two frogs and immersed them in a saline solution that allowed them to keep beating. One of the hearts had the vagus nerve that controls the beating of the heart still attached, while the other did not. By electrically stimulating the vagus nerve, Lowy made the first heart beat slower. Then he took some of the liquid bathing the first heart and applied it to the second. Amazingly, the second heart then began to beat slower, proving that the vagus nerve released some soluble chemical that controls the heart rate. That soluble chemical turned out to be the first neurotransmitter ever identified, acetylcholine. Lowy, who was Jewish, received the 1936 Nobel Prize for Medicine, but just two years later was forced out of Austria, where he was professor at the University of Graz by the Nazis. He ended up continuing his career in the U.S. at New York University. There's a fascinating footnote to this story. The solution that was used to keep the frog hearts beating outside the body was the result of a lucky accident. In the late 1800s, there was great interest in exploring whether tissues could be kept functioning outside the body. An obvious idea was to immerse them in blood, which did keep tissues functioning but was difficult to work with. It was known at the time that plasma, the liquid that remains when blood cells are removed, contains various salts that are critical for the proper functioning of cells. Dr. Sidney Ringer at University College London had his assistant make up a water solution containing salts such as sodium chloride and potassium chloride to see if this could keep tissues alive. Well, that experiment worked. But when Ringer tried to repeat the experiment, it failed. It turned out that the assistant was sloppy and had not followed Ringer's instructions to prepare the solution with distilled water. He didn't think it was important to go to the bother of distilling water and used water supply through London's pipes. This water contained calcium, which was critical to keep cells functioning. Today, Ringer's solution, which has been further modified, is widely used in hospitals to restore the correct concentration of salts in the body. You know what? Sometimes carelessness in the lab pays off. And that for today is our Cup of Joe.